Amen. Don't Hallelujah. worry. We're going to praise him again before we leave. We're going to worship him some more before we leave. Amen. Amen. But we're going to go right now into the word of God. Amen. Amen. We thank each of you for your being here in your respective places. Amen. Amen. But aren't you glad? That we are members of a church that are not ruled and governed by program. Amen. We can't program God. But how many of you know God programs us? Amen. Amen. And with that being said, grab your Bibles and let's turn to the 16th chapter of the gospel according to Matthew. Amen. 16th chapter of the gospel according to Matthew. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. The Lord is here. The Lord is here this morning. Amen. Amen. And he's here to bless us real good. Amen. We don't have to worry about setting protocol this morning because the Holy Ghost has already set the protocol. Amen. And nobody gets honored this morning but him. Amen. Amen. If you have it, go ahead and stand all over the building as we shall begin reading Matthew chapter number 16. Amen. This is a gospel. Amen. And so at the end of it, the, the uh, liturgical saying will be, this is the gospel of Christ. Your response is praise to you, Lord Christ. Amen. And it says, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea, Philippi. Sounds familiar, don't it? <laughs> he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Verse 15, he said to them, But who do you say that I am? Our favorite character, Big Mouth Simon Peter, answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, Petra, and on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell, somebody say hell. hell, yes, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I don't have a snazzy topic, but I have good, solid truth. I'm going to preach this morning on Christ I stand. Amen. On Christ I stand. For this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Amen. You may be seated. On Christ I stand. A lot of times we as people of God and people in general, we always are looking for something entertaining. We're always looking for something snazzy, looking for something catchy. We're looking for the latest new trend of church growth and development. We're looking for the latest new Episcopal garment to wear. We're looking for the latest new praise and worship song to sing. We're looking, uh, missing for the latest new uh, uh, dress to wear, the latest new hat. But how many of you know that sometimes we need to push all of that junk aside and go back to the truth that Jesus Christ is the only way. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is the only way. This morning, it's not about a hat. It's not about a suit. It's not about a praise and worship song. Because let me tell you something. You can sing until you're blue in the face. But if you don't have Jesus Christ, 
your singing is just hollering. Your singing right. is, is just passing off fucking breath. Uh -huh. Your singing is, is, is just throwing sweat everywhere, but on Christ. Yes, yes. Let me tell you something. I can't stand on a song. I can't stand right. on a prophecy. Uh -huh. I can't stand on a church building, but I can stand on Christ. Amen. Let me tell you something. When the church right. burns down, I can still right. stand on Christ. Yeah. Let me tell you something. When the bishop dies, let me tell you something. I will, we, we're still praying for, for uh, Evangel Fellowship this morning. They're, they're, they're sitting in church now, and their pastor who was there two weeks ago is not there with them anymore. But I certainly hope that there was nobody in Evangel Fellowship that stood on their pastor because this morning their pastor is not there. And that's why I tell y'all, don't y'all honor me with all of this robe and all of this flowers and all of this fancy because the day is going to come where I'm going to have to die. The day is going to come. Mother trying to sit me up in a chair, but, but after they get me out of the chair, they going to have to put me in the ground. My body is going to rock. All these rings that I have on is going to decay. But Jesus Christ will never oh, decay. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ will never rot. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ will never die. That's why I stand on him. All right. All right. That's why I stand All on right. him this morning. Somebody's under the, I tried to find the hymn this morning. Oh Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sick and sand. Let me say, his yoke, his covenant, and his blood. You, 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 you know it, you know it, you know it. When darkness hides his lovely face, and I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale. <laughs> you know the song. Hallelujah. But our text this morning. Hallelujah. Our text this morning is a very controversial text. I'm going to deal with the text this morning. Because a lot of times, Elena, we have taken this text and we've tried to use it. And we've tried, and we've tried us who are theologically sound and got all of these degrees and all of this stuff and all of this seminary training. We really do not preach this text properly. Because let me tell you something. A lot of preachers will only jump, will only preach verse 19. The part that says that whatever you bind on earth, you know, it's more to just binding and loosing. Because let me tell you something, when you're binding and when you're loosing, you got to know what it is that you're binding right, and the authority God. that you're binding it in. Amen. Let me tell you something, I can't bind you on my own. I can't bind you with those degrees on my wall. I can't bind you with all of these rings and chains and Episcopal garments. I can't bind you, and check this out, I can't bind you myself anyway. All right, my Lord. Hmm. The founding father of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, God rest his soul, said, he's famous for saying this, it's the spirit of a thing. All right. I can't bind you, but I can bind your spirit. Huh? I can't bind you from not coming to church, but I can bind your late spirit. I can bind your non-tithing spirit. I can bind your dead spirit, and I can lose in you the spirit to give, the spirit All to right. rejoice, the spirit to clap your hands. This is why I clap your hands until your hands fall All off. Right. This is why I keep saying, oh, keep on clapping. Keep on All clapping right. because I'm trying to loose the spirit that's holding you back. Right. Amen. Yes. It's not people that's holding you back, but it's a spirit. Uh -huh. it's, it's not people that, that, that's coming against you, but it's a spirit. That's why I said the scripture says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and right. against powers, against rulers of the darkness right. in this present age. And let me tell you something, when you come up against these spirits, you cannot go in your own power and in your own name. Y'all making me nervous. Let me try to slow down a little bit now. But let's deal with the text right quick. Let's go back and grab your Bibles. Go back. Elena to 18. There we go. Let's, let's look at 18. And I say to you, Peter, on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. A lot of times we mess that scripture up. Uh -huh. A lot of times we mess that scripture up, missing. We mess it up. Because 
when you look at and when you take the word Peter all the way back to its Greek origin, you will find that Peter is the word Petra. P-E-T-R-A. Petra. Petra, Petra. When you define Petra, you will see that Petra means rock. That's what it is. Look it up. Petra means rock. R-O-C-K. A stone. A marble. A rock. But when you look at it, if you have any type of common sense, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you got any common sense? That's right. Make them answer you back. Y'all looking at me. I said, look at them. Make them answer you back. Do you got any common sense? Make them answer you back. Because anybody with any common sense would know that Jesus did not tell Peter that he was building the rock on him. And he was building the church on him. Why? Because Peter was a cusser. Let me tell you something. Peter was a cusser. Peter would cuss you out. So do you think that, that Jesus would build the church on a cussing spirit? Hmm. But not only was Peter was a cusser, but Peter was an evil somebody. <laughs> Peter was a mean rascal. Peter would cut your ear off. Peter always took a knife. So do you actually think that Christ would build the church on a knife carrying principle? Don't get quiet now. I'm preaching good already. But look at and let us look at what it is that the Lord built his church on. And it's going to shock you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Amen. 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 Talk back to me now. All right. Go back to verse number 16 and let's look at the rock that, that the Lord built the church on. Simon Peter said, Thou art 